Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sound Off Sports. I'm your host, Mike Davis. We got a great show for you. We're going to be talking about those big time NFL QB deals. Yes, we got to talk Tua. We got to talk Jordan Love. Also, we, of course, got to talk about the Paris Summer Games. We got a little bit of that. Plus, we're joined later in the studio by one half of Christian and Scooby. You know him, Christian Stoynev, a tremendous halftime NBA performer. You're going to love to see this guy. We got him joining me in the studio. SOS starts right now. Make some noise. This is Sound Off Sports, sponsored by Sam and Ash. Hello, everybody. Welcome to SOS Sound Off Sports. I'm your host, Mike Davis, joined by my main man, James Edward Barrickman the fourth. Guys, we got to talk about these two big time QB extensions, extensions we've seen in the NFL. Uh, Jordan Love, Tua Tagovailoa, uh, big time contracts, and a lot of talk around town about what these mean for these respective franchises. Just before we get into your responses, Jordan Love, he signed a four-year $220 million deal, and Tua signed a four-year $212.4 million deal. We asked you guys at home, which team got the better deal? James, what are people saying? This first one from Chris Wheat on Facebook, he says, they're both making more than Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Why? It's crazy. So let's break this down. Actually, when it comes to who's making the highest average per year, Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, and Jordan Love are making 55. That's the highest in terms of quarterbacks. After that, Tua is now in that second tier at 53.1. Then it goes Goff, Herbert, and Lamar Jackson. So Patrick Mahomes is below a lot of these dudes. Uh, he has a different philosophy in terms of how he's trying to disperse more, take a little less and disperse that money around so he can keep winning Super Bowls. But um, this is craziness. I think you know, James, you and I are aligned. We're, we're not in love with Tua. We're kind of puzzled that the Dolphins really, they went all in with this guy, and we weren't even sure if he was a franchise quarterback. Tell me, what are your initial reactions and thoughts to this major deal? I, I feel way better about the Jordan Love deal yes. than I do about the Tua deal. I felt like it was a little early to make Jordan Love like one of the highest paid quarterbacks in the league, but I feel much better about that than I do about Tua. I am not sure what the Dolphins are doing at all because what has Tua done to prove to you that he deserves to be paid like one of the elite quarterbacks? We know he's bad in cold weather. He's 6-14. and 14 in games where it's below 70 degrees. And I know you hate when I bring that up. But he can't win against playoff teams either. Last year, he was 1-5 against teams that made the playoffs. Their only win against the Cowboys at home. And they ended the year on a three-game losing streak, blown out at Baltimore. Right. Lost at home in a must-win game for the division against Buffalo, and then went to Kansas City on the road and got blown out by Kansas City. And in those last three games... To a 56% completion percentage, averaging under 200 yards per game, and averaging over one and a half picks per game. Yeah, he gets sloppy in big games. So when it matters most, he is not a good quarterback. In fact, he's a bad quarterback, so, so I'm what, not quite sure what he's so doing. So I guess the Dolphins, they have all this positive momentum. They got a great head coach in Mike McDaniel. They got Waddle. They got Hill. They got HN. They got all these great talented dynamic players they need a quarterback you know so what do they do they're in a win mode you know now currently the yeah. past two years they make the playoffs but they get bounced in the wild card round now Tua had all the health issues we remember from a couple years ago he right. stayed healthy last year which is a good sign but still I, I guess this is the going rate for quarterbacks and I think if we asked everybody at home we know love is the better deal the question is if you were running the Dolphins would you have paid him? What do you do? I mean, you're kind of handicapped. You're kind of, that's your dude, right? What do you do? I think the question is like, can somebody else do the job yes. that Tua is doing? And I think yes. Like you look at, it's kind of a similar model in my eyes to what San Francisco is doing, right? Because they have this great roster. They have a genius of, a, of an offensive head coach. They just need kind of an elite guy to get them over the hump. Is Brock Purdy going to win them a Super Bowl? No. Could they win a Super Bowl with Brock Purdy? Maybe. And that's kind of what I'm saying is going on here in Miami. I wouldn't have paid Tua this money because I feel like there are other guys who could do the job that Tua does on a weekly yeah, basis. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's a very fascinating thing. But let's hear what else people are saying at home when it comes to this particular issue. 
Corey Livermore on Facebook says, all I know is that Jordan set the market and Jerry don't want to pay Dak. Well, and that's a whole nother issue. I mean, right. what's going to happen there? The Cowboys got to pay CD. They got to pay Micah. Is Dak the guy who gets you over the hump? And that's the question. There's so many quarterbacks that garner a, 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 a tremendously lucrative contract. But the question is, can they actually take their team over the hump, and I don't think we believe there's a lot of quarterbacks who can do that. Now, Love, I believe a little bit more in. He's only 25. 100%. Here's something crazy. In his first year as the starting quarterback, the Green Bay Packers made the playoffs. We all remember he had that great win against the Cowboys, had the bad ending to the game against San Francisco, but they really could have won that game. They I gave mean, everything they They could gave handle. that up. The crazy thing is Rodgers and Favre both didn't make the playoffs their first year as quarterbacks of the Green Bay Packers, but Jordan Love did. So, I, listen, I, I like Love a lot. You know, I think it's a totally different situation than Tua. And the crazy thing is this guy's going to make $220 million right now with I think it's like 155 guaranteed. He's going to be 30 getting that next contract. It's incredible. Yeah. I, I think when you look at Jordan Love, you've seen flashes of like the it, like where this guy could be good. Tua... Where have we seen that? I mean, he, he looks great against the Broncos <laughs> at home in right. the 80-plus degree weather when he's dropping 70 on the on the bad teams. But right. I think when you're a team like the Dolphins and you're in the AFC and you got to go play Mahomes in Kansas City, you got to go play Josh Allen in Buffalo, Lamar in the Ravens in Baltimore, Cincinnati, Houston and C.J. Stroud. Now, in one of these days, Herbert and the Chargers are going to figure this thing out, and it's just another quarterback yeah. in you know in this big dog filled AFC. I just don't think that I would have wanted to hitch my wagon to a guy like Tua when I'm in the AFC. It's interesting. They must like something in him. The team must believe in him. And he knows that, like, he's the highest paid dude now in that building, and he's got to make it happen. I mean, there's no more excuses. And he doesn't have the greatest arm. He doesn't have the greatest, you know, pedigree when it comes to health. So it's fascinating that they really do, like you're saying, want to hitch their wagon to the Tua train. But listen, I think a lot like you, when he's tossing six touchdowns in a blowout game, it's more of a, a function of McDaniel and his scheming. 100%. It's rather kind of like the Purdy in the Shanahan offense. But um, I don't know. We're going to have to see it play out in real time. Real quickly, guys, coming up. In our next block, we're going to be talking to, yes, Christian Stoyanev, one half of Christian and Scooby. You don't want to miss this guy. Very exciting stuff. That's coming up next on SOS. You're watching Sound Off Sports, sponsored by Sam and Ash. All right, welcome back to Sound Off Sports. I am joined now by one of my favorite people, in Las Vegas. Listen, if you went to an NBA game in any recent time over the past, you know, year or so, you would have probably seen this man right here, Christian Stoynev. He's famous for him and Christian and Scooby, his wonderful Chihuahua dog dude. Some of the things you guys do at halftime shows during an NBA season, it's remarkable when I see you do stuff. Tell me, you and Scooby, yeah. you have a telepathy between you two. How yeah. long have you been together, you and Scooby? Well, thanks for having me, first of all. I'm used to saying us, but thanks yeah. for having me. Uh, well, the telepathy, like you said, is definitely there through years of chemistry and just kind of working through it and just experience. So, um, you know, a lot of times I feel like I don't even have to say anything during the whole routine, and he would just know what to do. You guys are like Stockton and Malone. Yeah, that's a good way to describe <laughs> it. Absolutely. So there's just a certain chemistry, just like I, I feel like just like with anybody that when you work for, together for a while, you kind of pick that up. and. Yeah. You know, I've been doing halftime shows for, I, we're about to start our 12th year here oh next year. Oh, my God. So, you know, there's been a couple Scoobies that have gone through the generations. And with each of them, you kind of develop that chemistry, chemistry, you know, through that experience. And so, like, now I feel like if I just look at him a certain way, he'll know, like, oh, it's this trick and things like that. But they really are just incredible and super smart. And I feel like most dogs, to be honest, I feel like have that capability. It's just a matter of having that patience and willing to kind of listen to them. Like, and having somebody who can bring that out in them and you, right. and you have a, a real skill in that. But let's talk about how you really are an athlete because here in Vegas, there's so many people that, you know, more than any other place probably on the face of the earth that are in the, the sport of 
circus, right? right. And you kind of really started with Spiegel World, and I became familiar with you through Atomic Saloon. So you really are a traditional athlete in the sense that even today, before you got into the studio, you're like, dude, I had to do a Pilates class yeah. today yeah. just to keep my body up to snuff. So tell me a little bit about your training and how you actually first put together the idea from transitioning from strip performing to like, you know what? I'm gonna bring this to the NBA stage. How did this all come about? So this all started, so actually my experience takes me way back to when I was even just, I started performing when I was five years old. So my parents were performers. So I started off as a little kid just trying different things and trying to unicycle or juggle or eventually at 10 I started doing handstands and I stuck with it. Um, but the thing is for me that I, growing up, I was always that kid that loved sports. Sports was my passion above performing. And you loved the NBA. Like, yes, basketball, like above all, football as well. But yeah. like basketball was my favorite thing. Like I grew up in New York City and I'd be out there when it was like 30 degrees shooting hoops with my hands wet and freezing. Right, right. But I loved the game so much. So growing up, I wanted to be a basketball player. And then obviously I stopped <laughs> growing up. And so at that point, um, I had learned this talent that, you know, my parents guided me towards. And obviously, once Scooby became part of the act in the picture, then that made it super unique. And so I just had noticed that there were halftime shows and people were performing that. And there was great performers that did that, you know, before me. And that kind of inspired me to be like, all right, you know what? I still could find my way into a, onto a basketball court. And to be frank... At the time, I wasn't even thinking of it like business or like career wise. I was just thinking of it as like, that would get me through the door. <laughs> like I'll be right. in the building for the game right. so I could like watch the game. So it was super cool. And, you know, that first year I was definitely like, you know, a fan as well. Like I was behind the scenes, like seeing James Harden walk by and all these players I watched on TV. And I remember just being kind of starstruck. Like I was like, so cool. I'm Have right you here. ever had an inner person? Like, did anybody ever come up to you during a show or something like, oh my God, this is, you know, Kevin Durant just came up to me and like, yeah. dude, you're good. Did you ever have an exchange like that? Yeah, I mean, you know, the guys are, it's different. I have both perspectives. I have the perspective of when I started, I was a fan. Yeah. And then the perspective now where I've been doing this for over 10 years, where you realize these guys are at work. Right. And so they're super, you know, like they're just like regular people that are just there for their jobs. And right. obviously, but their job is always in the spotlight. But yeah, I mean, like even that Harden was like, oh, is this the little doggy that does the tricks? Like, and he literally <laughs> said doggy, which is like not what you expect him to say. But he was super cool about it. You know, I've had, you know, other players who, you know, have been super cool about it. Danny Green's a guy that I, I feel like now when I see him, we say what's up to each other. Really? And same thing with Kyle Lowry, which is one of my favorite interactions is with Lowry because I grew up a Raptors fan. And so obviously Lowry got the championship right. with the Raptors and um, and yeah, he's super cool. One time I was performing and I was like leaving the court and he came back out to start warming up and he was like, yo, yo. And he like called me over. And I, I remember wow. even. Yeah, this was like two seasons ago. So even at my age, I still was like, oh, man, that's so cool that Kyle called me over and just said what up. You know, there's See, like, but they're super cool. guys. That's so great. So uh, I'm so curious. So what you do is you're always sporting a jersey in the arena in which you're playing. So they give you a jersey. So how does yeah. that work? Because I always want to know, because you must have, how many jerseys? Must yeah, that's you have? a great question that I do get asked more often now. But um, I have, you know, too like, many to count. Like, I'm over 100 for sure. Oh, easily. And, um, but yeah, like I, like I said, it's just... Uh, you know, I am a performer, and this is my profession, my career, but there's still that little kid in me. So when I do get a jersey, and especially now that a lot of teams will give me a jersey with my name on it, it feels like, I'm, like I made it. Like, it's super yeah. cool. Like, I'm like, you know, I, I wasn't able to become that basketball player, but I still found a way to get myself onto a basketball court. And I so, love it. And sometimes, hey, halftime, like, performances are between six and seven minutes, so sometimes I'm like, hey, I got more on-court minutes than some of the players. <laughs> Yeah. So it's super cool. So, yeah, so. there's some bench guys not getting that. Real quickly, last question. Which stadium ha just blew your socks off? You're like, man, I can't believe I'm here. Or just a, a place when you reflect back, you're like, man, this arena was dope. Well, keeping it with basketball, a lot of the new arenas are super cool. But then sometimes just the older ones have that history, like Madison Square Garden. Yeah. Obviously, you know, crypto that's now you know, it's now crypto that was Staples right. Center. And I remember watching Kobe play there as a kid. And I was like, so like, wow, I'm in this arena now. And 
You know, I do take a beat, usually like a moment before every performance, and I look up and try to read the arena name. But they've all kind of changed through the years. Like yeah. Pepsi Center in Denver is now Ball Arena, so they all change. But just to take that moment and be like, I'm in that building. And so that's pretty cool. But the one experience I will say that really, like, kind of was wow was, um, you know, we did our first NFL game, and it was at Soldier Field. Ooh. And there, I must say, I was nervous and because it's like 70,000 people. And that one did give me... Again, like, it was just more so of, like, oh, man, like, this is big time. Like, there's 70,000 people right now about to watch me on the field perform. Um, and that was just super cool. And I was nervous because, you know, what I do is with, like, a little chihuahua. And I was like, I don't know if all these people will see it. But nowadays, and not even Soldier Field because one of the older stadiums. But, right. um, you know, they all got the screens and stuff. And once I had, like, a good reaction right away, I, I was rolling. Like, I was so excited. I was like, oh, my God, they're, like... They're in it with us. Like the yeah. fans here were it's so good. It's almost like sinking that first jump shot yeah. and then your nerves, you know, subside. Yeah. And so, then you just have fun. So hey, it was awesome. Guys, you got to make sure you check this dude out. Where? Tell us your Instagram again. It's C.A. Stoinev. But if you just search Christian and Scooby, it'll come up. You'll find us like Christian that. Christian and Scooby. It's the dynamic duo. One of the most talented dudes in all of Las Vegas. Christian, great seeing you. Awesome. Good luck this offseason. Good luck in the upcoming NBA season. Thank you. Guys, we'll be right back after a short break. Hello, welcome back to SOS. All right, so now we're going to be talking a little bit about the Paris Summer Games, all that excitement. We wanted to know at home what you guys thought was the most exciting thing you're tuning into when it comes to the Summer Olympics. James, what are we hearing from everyone? This first one from Linda Hallbrook Evans on Facebook says, Watching Las Vegas Sandpiper Katie Grimes win silver. See, look at that. Vegas native finished second. got to clap it up for that. We always love to see a Vegas native doing a great job. Uh, what else do we have? We got uh, Phil Pinson on Facebook says, My little cousin Poe Pinson, women's skateboarding. That is a Florida native, finished wow. uh, fifth. Okay. In the women's street skateboarding final on wow, Sunday. Wow, that guy's got uh, Olympic medal DNA, that dude. Look at that. We got I Olympic love, family I calling love it. that. All right, James, what about you? What have you been tuning into that you love? Honestly, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I am locked into every single Olympic event. It's fun Not to even watch. basketball? That's what I was getting to. Okay. I, enjoy, I enjoy watching the hoops. I love watching the USA men's team. I love watching the USA women's team and the, you know, the super squad that they have put together. But not just you know, KD, Durant, Asia, Brianna Stewart. I like seeing some of the like forgotten March Madness legends that you'll Ooh. see pop up on some of these Olympic teams. Here's a name for you. Okay. Let me know if you remember this. Thomas Walkup of Stephen F. Austin, circa like 2016, he upset my West Virginia Mountaineers. Was that to do with the beard? He had a beard, yeah, yes. And beer. he dropped about 30 on the, my West Virginia Mountaineers in 2016. We were a three seed. They were a 14 <laughs> seed. Knocked us out of the tournament. And good to see that he's still playing. He's on Greece these days. Greece? Okay. Yes. See, I would have never guessed that. See, me, I'm loving seeing Chase Budinger who, you know, tremendous NBA player, uh, played with the Rockets, a few different teams. Uh, he's killing it when it comes to volleyball. So I love multidiscipline. Some of these athletes, they're so talented. And you get to see a little Nadal and Alcaraz playing tennis So for Spain. So it, I like tuning into a little bit of everything. A little Simone Biles, it can't hurt. Uh, but we got two more responses. What else do we have? Yeah, we got two more here. Kelly Faust Ray on Facebook says, Simone Biles and, of course, Snoop. Yeah, Simone, she's perhaps, you know, the, the GOAT when it comes to uh, gymnastics for the Olympics. All right, and let's hear the last one we got. Finally, N. Bond on Facebook says, whenever Team USA wins, the men's gymnastics team winning and how happy they were was awesome. Yeah, it's the crazy thing is this year for swimming, we're not doing as well. Usually USA, we're collecting tons of medals when it comes to that, but a lot of other countries are uh, beating us when it comes to the pool, but uh, we're going to have to see. Listen, we got to see what happens with USA men's basketball. We know women's are going to take care of it. They're going to get that gold. But uh, KD coming into the mix off the bench was a big Do you time. think they might choke? No. No. They're no? Gonna you and, LeBron's uh, not going to let it happen. I hope not. They put together this team. Is this one of the greatest rosters we've ever seen yes. for USA basketball? Better when than Jason like Tatum is not getting the minutes. Team? When Jason Tatum's not getting minutes and he started today though. To okay, be fair. but when he the other you know first game he didn't even get any minutes. That's how good the team is that deep that Steve Kerr's like I forgot I even have Jason Tatum on this roster. If we still had Kawhi Leonard, 
it would be insane. It would just be madness. When but, you see something like that, Jason Tatum, a guy like Jason Tatum, yeah. NBA champion, not getting any minutes at the Olympics. He's taking time out of his summer yeah. to go play for this USA team. Does that upset you like it does? I know saw I saw Stephen A was like really, really upset about no, this. No, because you know what? It's about something bigger than yourself. You're playing for Team USA. In that that matchup, I guess Steve Kerr didn't want to go to him. You know? It's about being it's about giving and being part of something bigger than yourself. The NBA is not always like that. You know, it's right. star driven. When it comes to the Olympics and getting a gold, it's about team first. It's about country first. So he shouldn't be up. And he started today, anyway, yeah. So I so think all is forgiven. It's okay. Listen, Jalen Brown's not there. Jason Tatum is. So it's a totally different thing. But guys, coming up real quickly after a short break, we're going to be talking a little bit about something I saw that I love in sink or swim. You don't want to miss it. All right, welcome back. So it's time for Sink or Swim, something I saw that I just absolutely love. We always love the synergy between a father and a son. Well, 20 years ago, Matt Holiday hit his first career home run. And guess what? His son, Jackson Holiday, first overall pick in the draft with the Baltimore Orioles. He finally got uh, called back up to the big leagues when he was initially with the big league roster. Didn't do so well. He had 34 bats. He was batting under 100, only had two hits and one RBI. He gets sent down to AAA, gets called back up. His first career home run is a grand slam. We got to clap it up for Jackson Holiday, shortstop second baseman. The dude is going to have a bright future. We all remember how great his father was, Mad Holiday, with the Cardinals and the Rockies. Uh, he had some guns. For a baseball dude, he was uh, a fun player to watch, but it, it's very reminiscent of one of my favorite ball players of all time, Chase Utley, the second baseman for the Philadelphia Phillies. This dude, in his first career at bat, yes, against April 24th against the Rockies, he had his first major league hit, and it was a grand slam. So, reminiscent of Jackson Holiday, we're hoping and wishing him a bright future. Listen, not everybody can be Paul Skeens and just get called up and immediately be an all star stud who's an absolute rookie of the year. But Jackson Holiday got sent down. He came back up. First career home run, a grand slam. Clap it up to him. We'll see you guys next week on SOS.